MPC has now been updated to version 2.10. In this video, I'll show you how many of the new features work, and there are many audio examples included to get you excited about this superb update. Before I get into this video, I'd just like to thank all my current subscribers, anyone who follows and supports me on social media, all my current patrons on Patreon, and anyone that's been kind enough to donate to this channel. If you'd like to become a patron of mine, please head over to www.patreon.com forward slash tube digger. Each week I upload a new sample pack, MPC expansion or project file and associated assets. I'd also like to thank anyone who signed up for my new MPC masterclass video course. All videos are produced by capturing the MPC touch user interface or TUI in full HD, much like this video. If you're interested in the MPC masterclass, just head over to www.tubedigger.com forward slash MPC masterclass for more details. If you decide to take the course, please use the following discount code to receive 20% off. That code is MPC masterclass 20, all caps, and I'll put a link in the description and details of that down below also. There are three versions of the course, the basic version, which includes 27 videos covering all the basic information, setup guides and more. The standard version, which is currently at 37 videos and includes dedicated boom bap and aim and break modules. The premium version is the same as the standard version, but includes over $200 of sample and expansion packs currently for sale on my website. The course is also ever expanding, so please get involved now because as the course develops over time, so will the value and therefore the price. If you'd like private lessons with myself over Zoom, Skype, or Google Hangouts, please contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com for more details. So personally, I had no idea that Akai would provide us with all that's included before version 3.0, if indeed they continue to develop the MPC up to that version number. So what's included in MPC 2.10? Four new plug-in synths that run in both controller mode and standalone mode. Eight new air insert effects, including three vocal effects, Air Half Speed, which is an effect similar to the Halftime VST by Cable Guys, a stutter effect, and a dedicated limiter, which I've tested and works brilliantly on finished tracks for mastering purposes. There's also two new Akai effects, one of which is the Granulator, which is excellent for glitchy and experimental music, and is also available as an XY effect. Not only that, your MPC hardware now supports class compliant USB audio interfaces, enabling you to switch from the internal audio of the MPC and utilize up to 32 inputs and outputs simultaneously depending on your audio interface specifications. Keygroup programs have also been updated to include Portamento, which enables us to glide between notes. But first of all, let's take a look at the new drum program editor, which has been given a substantial overhaul and includes a dedicated pitch envelope and eight new drum effects per pad. So each of the six pages and sub pages within program edit have been substantially upgraded and modified. So you'll notice now on the master page that we can adjust the pad layer behavior. That's to say we can change the pads playback mode within this window when previously it was in the LFO modulation page. So you can see here in the middle that we can set the layer playback to cycle, velocity, or random. And we can also change whether it's a one shot, note on, and the new edition, note off. Let me just explain what note off is. If you press a pad and then release it, the sample's triggered upon release. So previously we just had one shot and note on. So that's what note off does. So this feature might be useful if you're in a live situation and you wanna press a pad wait for a particular beat to kick in or something to occur in your live set and then release that to trigger that actual sample. At the current time, I can't think of any other useful application for that, but it's basically allowing you to manually delay that sample before it's triggered upon releasing the pad with your finger, which could lead to some interesting results, as said, particularly in a live situation. So the simultaneous play and mute target options are still on the main page, but obviously their orientation is different now. Our parameters are now in columns as opposed to rows as they were previously. Let's now go to the samples page and you'll notice that now we've got four sub pages for samples when previously it was three. 
So let's start with the first page where we can see our waveform that's loaded into a layer. So there's a couple of things that are changed in here. You'll notice next to the semitones, just to the right of it, we've got a key. And you can see that it's showing the key that that sample is in. Now this is just a kick drum, but this will obviously work much better if you're loading in a musical sample. And if we adjust the semitones, you can see that will also adjust the key for this particular sample. And they're all color coded. The next thing on this page you'll notice over here towards the right is that we've now got this tail feature. So on pad one, I've got a kick. On pad two, I've got another kick. On pad three, I've got a snare. And on pad four, I've got another kick. I've programmed a short hip hop boom bap beat. Let's take a listen to that. So you'll notice the snare drum has got a bit of a click at the end of it and there's a bit of a gap when we play the sequence. So let's deal with that first. There's our snare. So to improve the click and the gap, we can use the new tail feature, which is here on the samples page. So you can see it's currently set to off. Let's apply about 900 milliseconds of tail. So what this does is apply a short loop at the end of a sample or wherever you set the end point. So with 900 milliseconds applied, this is how it sounds now. You can hear that really short buzz and that's because we've got the tail start set to a really short value of four milliseconds. Let's increase that to 200 milliseconds. So without being in note on mode or applying one of the loop modes, this is looping our pad, but it doesn't loop in the same way as looping the actual pad itself. If we press and hold this sample, it will still fade out based on the values set here and here. So I'm holding the pad now and it just fades off. However, we've still got that click and that's because of our endpoint. So if we bring our endpoint to maybe a smoother section and now trigger the sample, this is how it sounds. And now we get a really nice smooth loop, which is going to fill that gap. So let's take a look at the second, or should I say first sub page of the samples page. So this isn't much different as it was before. We can assign our samples to the different layers on the left here. We've got our semitone or semi-tune controls, fine tuning, level and pans. So this is the same as it was before as is this page where we can again assign a particular sample to our different layers. We've also got our offset parameter here. So if you're not too sure what offset does, if we move this slider into a negative value and trigger the sample, it will be delayed. If we move it into a positive value, it's gonna play this sample from a position away from the start point. It's essentially just doing what we would be doing here with the start point. So this last sub page for the samples page in our program edit pertains to randomization. So over on the far right, we've got a depth overall that we can add and we've got different parameters that we can randomize. So as an example for this kick drum, I'm going to increase the amount of pitch randomization for it. So if I trigger the pad back now, it's going to play this pad at various different pitches. So this is the amount of pitch randomization. This is the overall depth for all layers. So if we take that down, nothing happens. If we put this all the way up to the top, any layer that has got this pitch randomization or level randomization or pan or offset, that will occur. So again, if we choose offset, this is gonna give us different random offset values. Again, if we bring that down, maybe bring the pitch down, this will occur a lot more subtly. And it's just useful for making your drum sound a bit more human and realistic. And if you wanted to get rid of the click off of a kick drum, as an example, you could just go to your amp envelope, which is the next page we're gonna take a look at, and just slightly move the attack forward. So you get that randomization, but the clicks that are being caused because it's obviously offsetting here, from this offset value, 
it's going to take away that click by adjusting the amp envelope. So let's go back to that fourth page. The reason that cutoff and resonance and decay and attack are here, that's because these parameters apply to the entire pad. So we don't have a filter for each and every layer on every pad. We've just got one filter per pad. That's why these parameters are over here, but these are all obviously independent for each layer, as you can see going across. But these ones apply it to the entire pad. So if we add some cutoff, now this kick drum is going to do this. Let's now go to envelopes. And again, with the envelopes, we've got two additional pages that have been added because of the way things have been moved around in the drum program editor. So the first page is your amplitude envelope. On the side now, we can control our pan and level for the pad. So we can control that here, just in case we want quick access to that. And over on the far right, we've got our velocity modulation. So the different things that our velocity can control. So velocity is always gonna be at 127 by default. And that's basically what determines the amount of volume that we hear based on the amount of pressure that we apply to the pad when we strike it. We can also use velocity to modify the amplitude attack. So the less pressure I'm applying to the pad, the smoother attack we get. The more pressure I apply, the harder the attack. And the same goes for panning. We can pan the sample based on the amount of pressure that we apply. So the more pressure you apply, you're going to get more of the sample appear in the right speaker and the less pressure in the left speaker. And the same as before, we can change between attack decay or attack hold decay and sustain. But you'll notice we also get these two red dots, which allow us to modify the actual curve, which is nice. So we can really sculpt our envelopes now. So this is the same for all envelopes. So the other two envelopes that we've got are the filter envelope and the last envelope which most people are going to be really excited about is that finally Akai Pro have given us a pitch envelope so this is going to be really useful for people making those pitch sliding bass lines that we hear in a lot of modern trap music these days <laughs> Let's now go to LFO which was previously LFO modulation now we get this huge view of our LFO shape. So we can select the waveform or wave shape and scroll through those and get a nice graphic view of that. Here is our rate, obviously, and at the bottom we can choose different sync rates. And again, our display of the LFO shape changes to reflect those different values. So it's a shame that they haven't updated the destinations that we can apply the LFO to. Sample start would be one of the most obvious ones to lead to some really interesting results. So a bit more of an in-depth LFO modulation matrix will be quite nice for a future update. So basically this is just giving us a bit of a larger view of what we had previously because it's on its own dedicated page. So there's nothing else that we can really do in this page. Let's go to modulations. And again, these are as they were before, they're just on their own separate page now. So we can use velocity to control the start of a sample, filter cutoff, filter envelope attack, filter envelope depth, our pitch. And this is obviously per pad. So we're currently looking at pad 11. So you can see for pad two, our velocity is controlling our amplitude, which we could set in the other page. So let's go back to the envelopes. So you can see that's here as well. So let's bring that down and go back to modulation so this is just the same parameter shown on a different page so if we go back to envelopes you can see it's here so let's set it at 67 go back to here 67 so that's the same parameter just reflected on two different pages uh, amp attack pan and we've got our lfo destinations here as well so this might change to accommodate additional parameters so I can't guarantee this will look exactly the same because I'm working off a beta version before it's released to the public. So I do apologize if any of this changes, but I'm giving you this information up front just so you know mostly what to expect. But the reason I'm saying this might change is 
there seems to be a lot of doubling up or wasted space for other things that could potentially be on these pages. Maybe it's just because it's quick access to things that you might want to mix and match all on the same page just to make it more convenient. Let's go to the effects page. Now we've got some new additions to this. So previously this was just one page. We had our effects slots and up the top of the page we could load and save. But now you can see we've got this additional folder here which are factory effects racks. So these are basically effects chains presets. So let's just click into drums and percussion. Let's choose distorted drums. And you can see it just populates our effect slots with different effects. So this is really handy if you've set up a nice effects chain in one project, you can now save this effects chain. So if you press the disc symbol, it will save a new effects rack to wherever you want to save it. Now this folder in the middle, I believe, allows you to load one of your own user effects racks. So we save them with the disc icon and we load our own with this icon and we load the factory presets or the Akai presets from that icon. Other than that, there's nothing else different on this page, but you'll notice that we've got a second page for our effects. So this is where things get quite interesting as well. You can now see that we've got eight drum effects. So these aren't insert effects. These are dedicated drum effects for your pads. Of course, you can apply them to any samples. It doesn't have to be a drum sample. So let's go to the top left of the screen and tap where it says ring mod. And that will bring us up a list of all the drum effects that we can apply. So for the snare drum, I'm going to apply the soft clipper, which is in this second slot. Now you have to be careful with this because it really boosts the sound quite considerably, even at a low value. So this is how it sounds without this applied. Now I'm going to apply what I believe is gain. I'm not too sure what this parameter is, but I'm going to assume that it's 1.6 decibels of gain. And that's compared to this when it's set to off. So that's the snare. Let's deal with the kicks now. So I'm going to press pad one and I'm going to use this effect here, which is bass E wide. So I'm not too sure what the E refers to. But if we increase this to about five decibels, you're going to really hear this kick drum thud now. And I'm going to also do that for the other kick drums on pads two and four. So now the break sounds like this. So some really simple things that you can apply it to your drums or any other sample to really enhance them. This is just obviously one example using drum samples. But if we double tap in that box, you can see all these effects that we've got that we can apply. Obviously, you can apply those to basses and pad sounds and voices for different effects. But I've had a play and they do really work well on drum samples. The last feature that's been added to drum programs is merge programs. So it seems at this point we can only do this with drum programs. I might be wrong, but from what I can see, it just pertains to drum programs. So if we just take a look at my first program here, it's called Drums 1, and I've got a kick, clap, and hi-hat assigned to pads 1, 2, and 3 in pad bank A. And we can see that a bit more clearly by going to the pad mixer, and you can see that I've got a kick clap and a hi-hat. So they're the only sounds that I've got in this drum program. Let's go back to the main page and let's select our second program, which is drums two. And again, I've got a kick, I've got a snare and a hi-hat on the same pads. So let's go to our pad mixer and you can see that on those three pads. Let's go back to the main page and now let's merge these programs together. So let's press the pencil icon and now we can press merge programs. So you can see that it says from program drums one into program drums two, but this won't actually mix the sounds from drums one into drums two. It will actually create a new program. 
So we can choose to take the first three pads from drums one and have them start on pad bank B of drums two or in our new program, but I'm gonna uncheck that. I'm also gonna check make current program so we can see our newly created program straight away. So let's press do it. And you can see now that we've got drums two and drums one. So if I go back to my pad mixer, you can now see that we've got six sounds going from pad one to pad six. So from pads four up to pad six or four, five and six are the first three pads that we originally had in our drums one program. Once again, if we press the pencil icon and press merge programs, let's do the same thing again, but now let's choose start on next bank. Once again, if we press do it, it will create a new program again. So we've got drums two and drums one dash one now. And if we go to the pad mixer, you can see we've got our first three sounds, which were originally in drums two. And now we have to go to pad bank B to access the three pads from drums one. So it's just two different options that we've got there of where we actually mix those new sounds into our new program. So it retains our original programs if we want to keep those, but it just creates a new program as you can see in these two different examples. Key group programs have also been given an upgrade. So if I switch my track to key group programs, press and hold menu and press pad 14 and go to program edit, you can see that the key group programs have also been given a facelift in the same way that drum programs have. So I'm not gonna go through all of this, but basically the sample play modes have changed to give us this new option for note off, as we do have with drum programs now. The samples pages have been given this extra page or the fourth page for randomization. Envelopes, we've got three separate pages for those for amp, filter and pitch. We've got the enlarged and separate page for LFOs, but the biggest upgrade to key group programs is the addition of Portamento. So this is something that a lot of people would be very pleased to see and have been asking for for quite some time for the new generation of MPCs. So Portamento, if you don't know what it is, basically allows you to glide from one note to another. So we can glide up to a higher note and we can glide down from that note to a lower note. And that's all based on this time parameter in the top left hand corner. So you can see it says portamento and time. So let me put that to zero. And this is the 808 sound that I've got loaded. It sounds like this. If I increase the time parameter to something where we're gonna hear this, maybe 50, 53, you're now gonna hear the notes glide. Likewise, it will do the same thing, but it will glide upwards now. We can also quantize that. So this doesn't seem to be tied to the time division that you can set either using note repeat or your time correction menu. So it doesn't seem to be tied to anything like 16th, 8th or 32nd notes, etc. It still seems to be based on this. And also, if we've got quantize switched on, this is still showing us a value from 0 to 127. It's not showing us a value like quarter notes or eighth notes or sixteenth notes. So with quantize set, this is how it sounds now. And obviously, the higher we get, the slower that's going to be. And if we decrease that, that's going to be a faster glide that's quantized. So you can hardly hear it at 26. Let's put it back up to 40. So you can't really hear it step there. It's only really when you get around 50 or 60, you can start to hear it step. So that's the latest and probably most appealing addition to key group programs. We can now glide our notes with Portamento.
And if we go to the effects page, that's no different other than we've got the insert effects racks, which I showed you in the drum program section of this video. Another excellent effect that we've been given in MPC 2.10 is an Akai Professional effect and not an Air Instruments effect. And this is the Granulator. This is a brilliant effect for glitchy and experimental music. And it's kind of similar to a Eurorack module that some of you might be aware of, made by a company called Mutable Instruments. And that's called Clouds. And it's basically a texture synthesizer. So, so you, you can, can throw, throw anything, anything at this and, and turn it into, into something completely warped and different. But, but for this demo, I really struggled to think what to put through, through it to give you a good demonstration of its capabilities. Let's now take a look at one of the newly added vocal effects, which is found in the vocal category of your insert effects. So let's just drop that down and you can see we've got air vocal doubler, air vocal harmonizer, and air vocal tuner. So let's take a look at air vocal doubler. So a similar effect can be achieved to the vocal doubler by simply adding the same sample to different layers on a pad and then slightly offsetting the pitch using the fine tune and offsetting the panning for those layers. But obviously we've got this automatically set up for us if we use the air vocal doubler. And we can choose a total amount of eight voices. We've got a stereo spread control, so obviously at zero that's just gonna be centered. And the more we increase that, the more width we get with that effect. So the lead volume is basically your source sample. So if we take down the doubler volume and get rid of the lead volume, we're not going to hear anything. So this is the dry signal, basically. And if we increase the doubler volume with the lead volume all the way down, we just get the effect. We can increase the pitch of the doubling effect. So you start to get some weird and not so aesthetically pleasing results as you go into the higher values for the pitch. So I prefer to use this quite subtly with maybe 30% maximum. So it gives you that kind of chorusy flanger type effect. Let's now try the air vocal harmonizer. Now, this is the most interesting one for me. So now I'm going to play a demo which utilizes this, and I've actually automated some of the parameters in here, which is basically switching off these four different pitches that you can set for the different voices.
Another new insert effect by Air Instruments is Air Diode Clip. This is an excellent insert effect which can do some really magical things to snare drums, giving them this really crispy and crusty sheen. Next up is Air Stutter, which, as the name suggests, is a stutter effect which can produce some really glitchy results. Another great feature is now we've got the ability to use a class compliant USB audio interface to vastly expand the current limitations of the standalone hardware's physical inputs and outputs. So if we go to menu, preferences, and go to audio device, you can see at the top of the screen, we've got the option to change from the internal audio device inside your MPC hardware, to any class compliant USB audio interface that you've connected to your MPC. Let's click on the screen to come out. Underneath that, you can see it says 32 inputs and outputs. So depending on the amount of inputs and outputs your particular audio interface has, we can utilize up to 32 inputs and outputs. So if I check that box, it says, are you sure you want to restart your MPC? this will make 32 inputs and 32 outputs available. If you're in the middle of a project and we press restart, it will ask us if we want to save the project. Otherwise, we can just press restart. The MPC restarts and we can go back to menu, preferences, audio device, and now you can see 32 inputs and outputs is checked. Likewise, if we uncheck that, again, it asks us if we want to restart the MPC and it will make four inputs and eight outputs available. So that's pertaining to the MPC X because out of all of the current MPCs, it has the most inputs and outputs. So it's basically just saying it will revert it back to using the internal audio engine inside the MPC hardware. So let's press restart. and our MPC is back in its default state using its own internal audio device. The transport controls have been given a small but useful upgrade. Now, if we press and hold shift and press stop, our sequence will go back to the start in a stopped state. So if I press play on my MPC, it will play through. If I press stop, it will just stop in the particular position that I've stopped it at. Let's press play again. It will continuously play through. And if I press and hold shift and press stop, it will jump back to the start of the sequence in a stopped state. So this is quite handy if you wanted to edit something at the start of your sequence and not have it play through again, which would previously occur if we press play start, because that's really the only option we've got other than to use the locate menu, which you can see is highlighted towards the top right middle of the screen. And we'd have to just roll this back anti-clockwise with our data wheel. So even if we use our data wheel now, we can roll that up to maybe bar seven, press and hold shift and press stop, and that'll go back to the start of our sequence in a stopped state.
Another useful feature that's been added is undo history. So if we press menu and go up towards the top right of the screen and press on this small clock symbol, you can see now that we've got an undo history list, which will allow us to jump between undo and redo states rather than being in a particular NPC mode and have the NPC jump between those different windows and us not really know what we've just undone or redone. So if we press on the screen, you can see the red line jumps down and that's basically showing us everything that we're redoing. So if we press redo, that will just jump down. And if we press undo, it will jump back up and just give us a better visual display of all our undo and redo operations. We can't select a particular operation by pressing on the screen and undo it or redo it. It's literally just jumping between them sequentially, as you can see. So we can undo and redo from here, all in one page and not jump between all the different modes of the NPC. We've now been given four additional plugin instruments. So if we double tap in the plugin area here, now I am in controller mode, but these do work in standalone. We've now got Hype, which was previously found just on the Akai Force. We've got a Mellotron emulation, an ARP Odyssey emulation, and a Selena. So I'm not going to go into every single page and sub page and parameter of each of these synths. To install these, just follow the instructions from the download page on Akai Pro's website.